what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video it is that time of the year apparently the atlanta hawks may be looking to trade john collins once again it feels like every year just like miles turner that eventually he's going to get traded and it never happens but apparently the phoenix suns have shown significant interest in john collins via sham so today we're going to be doing a john collins phoenix suns rebuild before we get into today's video make sure you guys drop a like on this one of course subscribe if you're new to the channel as always greatly appreciated we're on the road to 30,000 subs and the goal is to reach that before the end of this year so we're setting the bar very very extremely high but we'll see if we can get it so if you got me out with that goal be greatly appreciated but basically uh the atlanta or not the atlanta hawks but the phoenix suns have obviously lost cameron johnson due to injury i don't know if he'll be back this year at all if he is it's probably going to be like later on in the season and of course jay crowder has shown an unwillingness to play for the Suns. so right now the suns are kind of limited at their front court depth the power forward position which is why trade for john collins could make some sense for them now i'll be honest with you i have no idea what john john collins trade value even is at this point because i feel like he would have been traded already if the atlanta hawks didn't ask much for him because like i said They've been trying to trade him for years, but it never seems to happen. So maybe it does eventually happen. Again, you guys can debate down in the comment section below with me. We can have a kind of a discussion because I don't even know what John Collins would be worth. But this is the trade that I did. It may not be enough. Maybe this is too little. Maybe I should have done a little bit more. Let me know what y'all think. So it's Jay Crowder, Landry Shaman to make the salary matches, obviously. So the Atlanta Hawks would get a power forward that could help them right away. And Jay Crowder, obviously. And then they get a first round pick out of, uh, you know, John Collins as well. Maybe two first round picks if you're really thinking. I don't know. It's tough to gauge how much trade value John Collins actually has. So now that, you know, DeAndre, Aiden, or not DeAndre, now that uh, Jay Crowder is gone, and then obviously Cameron Johnson being hurt with injury, which will put his injury on in a second, you now have John Collins who can play that power forward position for you. Because like I said, the Suns are lacking in that department right now. I believe Torrey Craig has been starting for them at the four. So this is what it would look like. Chris Paul has been out a couple games as well, but Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Mikael Bridges, John Collins, DeAndre, and if you had a healthy Cameron Johnson, which I'll probably just leave him healthy in the simulation, but if you had a healthy one, he could go back to being six man or whenever he decides to come back. Cameron Payne, Dario Sarch, and Torrey Craig, and then Jock Landale. So not a bad rotation by any means. John Collins and Phoenix could be very, very interesting. So I like the idea of the Suns going out and get him basically with how down bad they are at power forward right now. So we're going to go ahead and slam it to the end of this first season with John Collins on the roster. We are in start today. We're going to see if this team can go out there and win a championship. And we're going to do whatever, do whatever we can to make that happen for the Phoenix Suns. Because that's the aspiration and goals they have right now. You see this, man? This could be you right here. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get more out of the game you're watching. You're picking overs or unders on your favorite players that you love watching each and every day. Let me show you how it works. Prize Picks is available on mobile or desktop, and you basically get to choose two to five players, and you choose over or under on their props that they give you. You pretty much have every sport you can imagine on here. Uh, but let's say I wanted to go ahead and put a bet on Mitchell and Joel Embiid. I want to go more and more on them. If I get it right, I three times my money. Let's say I want to go up to five players, which is the most you can go up to. You can go uh, more or more on all of them. And that's going to 10 times your money. I started with $100 and so far I'm up to 500. I've been having a ton of fun over here on prize picks. If you want to go ahead and sign up, link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHBLES or imagine deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. If you deposit $100, you get $200 to work with. Thank you, Prize Picks, for sponsoring today's video. Back to the rebuild. Luka Doncic is one MVP. Paul Boncero is your rookie of the year. Bobby Portis is your sixth man and Giannis defensive player. And then Alperen Shingun is your most improved. And GB Bickerstaff is your coach of the year. So I was just reading the full report uh, from Shams and sounds like the Suns have interest in John Collins, but they don't like the idea of taking on his long-term salary. Which I guess makes sense. It seems like John Collins' contract really isn't even that bad, but I guess some teams view it as a bad contract. So it's very interesting to see how far John Collins has maybe fallen off a little bit. Because, I mean, at one point, this man was, yeah, like averaging 19 and 21. Uh, but some teams just don't look at his contract the same way, I guess. But regardless, we have him here. We're going to try to develop here in Phoenix. So 28 from Devin Booker. You had 14 from DeAndre, 12 from Chris Paul. Uh, the shot tendencies must be really low because we're going to need better scoring out of our boys here if we're going to win a championship. So what do we got at shot tendencies around Devin Booker? So Chris Balls is fine. DeAndre, let's boost that up, man. We're going to need you to be a stud in the playoffs. And then John Collins, since you are the title of the video, we might as well go ahead and boost you up a little bit as well. Chris Paul can go up to like a 70. And then Mikel Bridges will push him up to like a 61 or something. So we got the Clippers in round one. Uh, we have John Wall, Paul George, Kawhi, Amir Coffey, Zubac. Marcus Morris, Terrence Mann, and Norman Powell. So obviously, uh, the Clippers had Kawhi return for them last night, which is huge for them. Uh, hopefully, he can stay on the court. They had a very close game with Detroit. 
Uh, somebody current round against the Clippers, though. We do beat them in five. So that's a huge first step in order to get to the finals or back to the conference finals or back to the finals, you should say. And now we get to play the Pelicans. So we have CJ, Herbert Jones, Ingram, Zion. Obviously, these two teams had a really good series last year. Trey Murphy is going to turn to a stud. I mean, if he is eventually traded to a team where he has a bigger role, I love Trey Murphy's ceiling. But game one, we're down 1-0 to zero to the Pelicans. We do even it up by one. 27 from Ingram. 25 from Zion, but we have 25 and then 23 from Cameron Payne, which is huge off the bench. Game three, 2-1 lead. Uh, I don't want to go Simcast. Can we win game four? We can. Can we win game five? Yes, we can. Can we win game six? Game seven is going to be a big one here against the Pelicans. We might still be running a 10-man rotation, to be honest with you. Let's shrink that in the playoffs. I don't know why we didn't do that earlier. Game seven, going to New Orleans. Like I said, these two teams had an amazing series last year. At one point, it looks like the Pelicans may even win it. Because the Devin Booker went out a couple games, I think, or a game or two. I can't remember. But we do have a string hold on a game seven right now. Can we keep the lead? That was the question. They are taking the lead. Looks like a back and forth game. We need to get the lead back. We take it back. Do we keep it, though? They take it back. We take it. And it is going to be the closest game seven of a very close game seven. We beat the, I don't know why. I was going to say of all time. I don't know why. But 125 to 122. Karen Payne has been actually huge in the playoffs, averaging 14 points per game. But now we get John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. A healthy Desmond Bain and John Morant obviously is very, very scary. Jaron Jackson, of course, just returned recently for them as well. Uh, but I feel like we match up decently well against this team. I like the, I, I think I like our odds, but we'll see what happens. Game one, we're up one to zero, beat them by 13. Game two, two to zero, 141-133. So does John Collins push the Suns to championship? They even it up though. They've won three straight, and we're going to another game seven against a Grizzlies squad that's pretty scary. So this is a big game seven. You have to go to Memphis to win this one. We just did it on the road in New Orleans. Can we do the same thing here in Memphis? We have a lead again. It's going to be a back and forth game seven, it looks like, again, which are scary. We have a nice lead here, but they take it. We have a minute left on the clock. Does your boy jump in and screw this up? Yes, he does, because that's what I do. So let's jump in. Let's have some fun here. We do get the basketball here as well. So let me see if I can clutch up for you guys real quick. Um, usually I mess this up though. So don't be surprised if I screw this whole thing up. I'm going to have Cameron John. That's just, yep. Good start. Let's go. Let's go crush. We got this shit, I guess. Uh, Jaron Jackson is going to go. Uh, we got Devin Booker on Jaron Jackson, which I don't like. We got Tyus Jones out here. Do they even have John Moran? John Moran is not in here. Yeah, this is a mismatch and a half here. Devin Booker on Jaron Jackson. Yeah, that's a little too easy. I probably shouldn't have jumped in, to be honest with you. But it's okay. We still have time. I need a screen from DeAndre Aiden. Of course, I'm going to get it from Cameron Johnson, though. Um, Maybe I just attack the basket. I do have a layup with Cameron Johnson, though. So I guess I'll take it. 102, 104. We're only down two. We just need to stop. Let's not get a terrible mismatch like last time. I also have Cameron Payne out here on Tyus Jones. Not sure I love that. Cameron Payne looks like a... I don't know. He looks so small compared to Tyus Jones. <laughs> he looks like a user-created player that was, like, built to be the small. Why is Jaron Jackson... Why is Devin Booker guarding Jaron Jackson? I'm so confused right now. Uh, Jaron Jackson for three. We close out, and he's got a nice mid-range. Does he miss it? He does not. 102, 106. I might have sold here, to be honest with you, but you know what? I had to jump in and try to make something happen. Probably shouldn't have jumped in, but... That's why I do. I'm going to have to hit a three, and uh, we're going to have to go to Devin Booker here for a three. Let's see if I can hit it real quick. I'm going to shoot it, and it is short, and that is going to be your ball game. So let me just get out of here. Why did I jump in? I don't know. Wait. We have a reset. We have a reset. We do win. Let's go. That is what I'm talking about, and we lose a championship. Probably deserve that. Whatever. So I didn't win a championship regardless. I lost. I don't even know. I, I need to stop jumping in. I say that every time, and I jump in. And I just screw things up. But the last time I actually played, I did pretty good. Draft lottery time. This is going to be a big offseason to try to push this team over the top. We got to the fi well, conference finals and lost to the Grizzlies. So how do we make this team even better? Did Chris Paul retire on us? I hope not. Because that would have been very bad. But he did not. So staff signing. We're going to have Monty Williams still. We're not going to change that, obviously. As far as post-D coach is concerned, we're going to fill this out real quick. And then we're going to be looking to make another trade. Because we obviously want to put the best team possible to go win a championship with Chris Paul. DeAndre Aiden. I mean, we have our starting five. Maybe we just get like a better bench, I guess. I don't know. It's just a matter of putting the right pieces here. Because right now, our roster is pretty damn good. But it just needs a little bit more, it seems like. 
So team and player options, we are going to sign Cameron Payne, of course, to his team option. I mean, he was pretty good for us in the playoffs. I don't see a reason to let him go. Jock Landale, not a bad backup center. Then Cameron Johnson is a free agent that I definitely want to keep around for sure. So I don't know how we shrink them the roster more than we already have, but uh, we have Darius Sarge, Jock Landale, Damian Lee, Dwayne Washington, Cameron Johnson, of course, somebody you want to keep around. I'm going to sign Jock Landale to a two-year deal, and then I am going to wait for uh, Cameron Johnson to bring him back. And then it's just a matter. I didn't realize Landale was restricted for whatever reason, but that's fine. Not renouncing Cameron Johnson, which is good, uh, but I am going to re-sign him, of course, because I think he's a huge part of what Phoenix likes to do. Uh, so we're going to sign Cameron Johnson to a deal, and then we're going to go ahead and also we have like Seth Curry we could sign. But right now we have Chris Paul, Cameron Payne, Devin Booker the two, Mikel Bridges at the three, Collins Johnson, and then you have Aiden and Jock Landale. So really, we need another wing player, and we don't really have anyone to trade away. So at this point, you're really just kind of relying on maybe trading like a Terran or signing like a Terrence Ross, maybe a Winslow who's been really good in Portland this year, Alec Burks. Uh, Alec Burks could be fine. Seth Curry, honestly, I like the idea of the most. So I'm going to sign Seth Curry. Just kidding, goes to the Lakers. They probably need him a little bit more than I do anyway. Josh Richardson, I guess, could be fine as well. Kind of like the idea of him off the bench. And then you have like a Sarge that we could sign back. I guess he might be gone at this point, though. Um, and that might be it. So Torrey Craig could bring back. Sarge, it looks like we can bring back. I'm going to sign Sarge back, and I am going to sign Torrey Craig back because... Both of these contracts are going to maybe allow me to make a move at the deadline if I need to. But for now, I kind of like where we're at. Chris Paul, kind of wonder about him. Player progression, he is down one overall. If I did find a world where I traded Chris Paul away, like, do I get anything good out of it? Like a Drew Holiday, a Primo, Bam out of Bio, De'Aaron Fox. I mean, imagine De'Aaron Fox and uh, Booker would be amazing. I got Ben Simmons, Jamal Murray, D'Angelo Russell. Russell and... Uh, D Booker once upon a time friends, but I'm going to try to make it happen with Chris Paul. So I am going to wait till the deadline and then most likely make another move. I don't even know what move it would, there would be to made to be made. Maybe a better wing player, I guess. I'm going to move Richardson to the small four because I know he's going to go up and overall there. So I do like him a lot off our bench. So our bench, our starting five, all pretty damn good, I would say. Collins, Aiton, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, Mikel Bridges. There's a lot to like there. This team just can't get over the hump, it seems like. So let me load a draft class. I'm going to simulate probably to the trade deadline and then see what we can make happen at the deadline because this team is there, man. It's just a matter of putting it all together. I didn't expect the Jazz to accept this right away, but we did just make a trade with the Utah Jazz at the trade deadline to get Jared Vanderbilt. I really like the idea of Jared Vanderbilt coming off our bench. We traded 2026 first and Dario Sarge in order to get Jared Vanderbilt. At this point, I'm just kind of going for it, man. So we got Jared Vanderbilt joining us. And he's going to be coming off the bench. So now you kind of have an interesting rotation of Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Mikel Bridges, John Collins still, DeAndre Aiden, Jared Vanderbilt, Cameron Johnson, Cameron Payne, and Josh Richardson. So you have a really good bench with Vanderbilt joining us. He immediately becomes a six man, which I don't know if I like love, obviously, because not really a scorer necessarily, but someone who could be kind of your enforcement defense off the bench. So I kind of like Vanderbilt, and then he can maybe take over for Collins at times for defense. Uh, Collins is averaging 16 on the season, so it's not a bad year at all by him. So I really like the addition of Jared Vanderbilt. We needed to make that happen. Uh, right now, we are the first seed. We're 35 and 20, so things are going pretty well. Obviously, the ultimate goal, though, is to win a championship. I love the addition of Vanderbilt. Hopefully, that gets us to this point. So Luke is going to win MVP. Gregory Jackson, Rookie of the Year. Kevin Love is your sixth man. Giannis defensive player. Tyler Hero, most improved. And JB Bickerstaff is your coach of the year. Brandon Harrison is your executive. So you got Luka. John Morant, Giannis, Jason Tatum, and Jokic. Second team, LaMelo, Steph, LeBron, Jimmy, and Embiid. Uh, did we get like a Devin Book? Or did I say Devin Booker already? Maybe I did. Uh, No, I don't think I did. Nope, no Devin Booker. That kind of sucks. And then no all defensive team either. But that doesn't matter. I'd rather have the first seed than an all NBA representative, I guess. So we went 51 and 31 on the season. Not the greatest record in the world, but I guess we're above everyone else in the West. So... Player stats wise, you had 27 from Devin Booker. A little bit more help was uh, recognized here. DeAndre with 19 and 10. Obviously, Booker just kind of led the way like crazy. There was not a lot of scoring going around, but with some boosted shot tendencies, you definitely had a little bit more help. I feel like there's a lot of guys in this rotation that can score the basketball for us. So I really like this roster we've put together. Uh, if it does not work this year, maybe we find a way to replace Chris Paul. Uh, does he have another year on his contract? He has another team option. So I don't know what his plan is uh, for Chris Paul. If he keep, plans to keep on playing, I'm assuming maybe if the Suns get a ring, he would retire after that. But I don't know. We do have the Houston Rockets in round one. They have RJ Barrett, Victor Webanyama. I don't understand why 2K can't update RJ Barrett's contract. Like 
He signed an extension with the Knicks. Why do we have Hero's extension and Jordan Poole's extension, but not RJ Barrett's? It does not make any sense to me. Do better, Ronnie 2K and whoever's running this damn thing. So many current around against them, though. And we go to six with them. I meant to click Simway through game, but we went game six style on them. Josh or Jalen Green, not Josh Green. Uh, 29 from Devin Booker, 25 from Cameron Johnson and Chris Paul with 18 and 12. Not too bad. 17 and 14 as well out of eight. But now we get the team that pretty much eliminated us last year in the conference finals. Uh, you know, barring what I, you know, decided to do where I kind of jumped in and quit. But hey, you know what? It's all good. All good. We're down one to zero. They do or we do even it up. They're up two to one. They're up three to one on us, man. So it's right now it's not looking totally good. So Chris Paul, Devin Booker. Gonna run an eight-man rotation to see if we can maybe come back from this. Two to three. We're losing six to the Memphis Grizzlies. I know my next move. I think at this point, you gotta trade Chris Paul. I don't know if he's the guy holding us back, but I gotta try it. Sacramento Kings just got the fifth seed. Player retirements, Chris Paul. I gotta make sure you don't retire, to be honest with you. It is time to sign and trade you, I guess, because that's gonna be the next big move in order to make this roster put it all together. So I don't know what we get for him. Pelicans get number one. Thunder number two and three. The West is only going to get better. So our window of opportunity is totally running out. Chris Paul just isn't it anymore, I guess, here in the simulation. So that is going to be my next move. We got to trade him, I guess. So going to sign you. And then the next big move is signing Chris Paul and running it back one last final year. So let's see if uh, Chris Paul is going to be the you know key to making things work. So we have the 27th pick. Maybe we can get something good here. So number 27 we're going to have Mookie Cook or Skyward Clark. I'll take Skyward Clark here, and that will be my draft. Well, we'll sign the other guy. And maybe these two guys are part of the Chris Paul trade. Who knows? Player options. I am going to accept Chris Paul. I'm going to need to. And we have Dwayne Washington and Jock Landale as free agents. And then free agency. I mean, Jared Vanderbilt, somebody I do want to resign. Karen Payne as well. Uh, maybe. I don't know. We have to trade Chris Paul for something. So, Chris Paul. It's been nice, man, but you're not getting the job done for us. So I am going to throw him out there. 39-year-old Chris Paul. Don't even know who would want him, to be honest with you. Bobby Portis, Derek Lively, Marcus Smart, Zubac, Dylan Brooks, Bam out of Bio, Terry Rozier. What is that? The Charlotte Hornets wanting him, and we get a first, give them a first-round pick. Gary Trent Jr., Mitch Robinson, Jeremy Grant, James Najee, Dinwiddie, Ben Simmons, Aaron Gordon, uh, CJ McCollum. Lonnie Walker, Trayvon, Kevin Porter Jr. I don't love a ton. Of, I don't love a lot of these. Cat? Uh, I don't know why the Timberwolves would do that, though, to be honest with you. Like, it would be interesting to have Cat. We don't really have anywhere to play him anyway. That's kind of a crazy offer. We do have the Celtics offering me Marcus Smart. I mean, I don't know if Marcus Smart really changes much for us. I know he's going to bring the defense, obviously. Bam out of bio, Rozier. So it's between like Smart and Rozier, to be honest with you. And if you really look at it, because Simmons is cool and all, but Devin Booker and Ben Simmons on the same team doesn't sound like something that would happen. CJ McCollum is also nice. Do I just wait? Maybe I throw Skyler Clark and this guy in here. Maybe that makes a difference. Zach Levine is popping up. Okay, I kind of like the idea of this, where we trade the Chicago Bulls a bunch of players. Uh, they go maybe full reset mode. They're, maybe they're just getting out of Zach Levine's contract one one year earlier. Maybe we can justify that. Jaron Jackson, Tyler Hero. Kind of like the idea of Tyler Hero as well. You could say the Miami Heat are going for it. They're going to be like, okay, clearly Hero's not working. What do you trade Hero for a 39-year-old, though? It's so hard justifying trading Chris Paul for anything, to be honest with you. Unless we're getting up like a significant amount of assets, which we're giving up two young players here. We get Max Truce and Tyler Hero out of it. Uh, I like this trade a lot, but why would the Miami Heat do this? Like I said, it would have to be them cl completely going for it. They're going like, you know what? All of our eggs in. We're trading Jimmy. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Why am I trying to justify it? None of these trades make sense, to be honest with you. Who's trading for a 39-year-old Chris Paul? It's the Bulls, I guess. I'll offer them all my picks as well. I don't know. Trying to make something happen here to win a championship. I don't think I should get Derek Lively out of them, though. Maybe one first. I don't know. You get all these young players and a two first for Chris Paul. I mean, are we really? I can't do it, man. Trading like I want to trade Chris Paul, but what trade actually makes sense? None. I'm going to sign Cameron Payne back and sign him back to a deal. Uh, and then maybe after free agency is over, maybe there's a better trade out there. I'm going to give Vanderbilt a deal as well. Keep him around. And then... I mean, after that, we got like Montrose Harrell. But yeah, let's get past free agency. Jock Landale, I'm going to give a contract to as well. 
Let's get past free agency and then let's try this again. Like I want to trade Chris Paul, but I don't want to do anything that doesn't make any realm of sense. So you got Chris Paul going down like crazy. So his trade value only got worse, but I got to do something, man. I'm going to do this trade, I guess. I'm trading Chris Paul in the future first for D'Angelo Russell. I keep mortgaging my future here in Phoenix, but we got to do something. I, won't, I don't necessarily have to give up this first, but I'm not sure why the Spurs would want to... I mean, I guess if they're just looking to get out of Russell's contract one year earlier, I don't know. I don't even know why D'Angelo Russell is on the Spurs, but I'm going to try to do this. If he was on the Timberwolves, though, let's pretend he's on the Timberwolves. I think this makes a little bit more sense when the Timberwolves are like, you know what? Let's just... We trade for Gobert. D'Angelo Russell clearly isn't working. Let's go for a 39-year-old 39 Chris Paul and hope it works out. I don't know. Going to do this trade. D'Angelo Russell is a Phoenix Sun next to Devin Booker. So we get younger, and we're going to have to hope that is the ultimate thing we needed to make this work. I'm going to run it back one last year to see if this team can win a championship. No regrets. We get Chris Paul out of here. We bring in D'Lo, and he's your new point guard next to Devin Booker, which those two used to be good friends, I think, if I remember correctly. Nine-man rotation, D'Angelo Russell, D-Book, Mikael Bridges, John Collins, DeAndre Ayton, Vanderbilt, Johnson, Richardson, and Cameron Payne. Pretty good rotation. Proficiency lands us at four and a half. Hopefully, this is the year we bring a championship to Phoenix. All right, we ran it back one more year. We have the second seed out West. Your player stats, you have 28 from Devin Booker, 19 from DeAndre Ayton, 17 from John Collins, and 16 from D'Lo, and six assists. So if this isn't the year, it's never going to be the year, apparently. So we get the Portland Trailblazers in round one. You have Shaden Sharp and Anthony Simons, Damian Lower still here. You got Jalen Smith, Josh Hart, Nurkic, and Jakob Pertl, which I like the Jakob Pertl edition, but they did lose Jeremy Graham, which is really unfortunate. But regardless... Obviously, I'm hoping to eliminate them here. Although I am a Blazers fan, we need to take care of the Blazers here. We're down one to zero to start things off. We even it up. Game three up two to one. Three to one. Do we beat them in five? We beat them in six, hopefully. Yes, we do. We're on to the second round. You got the Pelicans getting eliminated, which is nice. And the Thunder eliminated the Grizzlies. So that could help us or it could be a curse. Who knows? So we got the Sacramento Kings upsetting the Rockets. So this is a weird bracket, but we do have to deal with the Thunder. And I'm kind of scared to look because they had the second and the third overall pick last year, if I'm not mistaken. They have Josh Giddy Shea, Lou Dort, Pokashevsky, Jeff Holmgren, Scotty Henderson, Xavier Booker. Look at that bench, man. Just a ton of prospects that could be stars on other teams. But we'll see. Honestly, would not be surprised we got eliminated here. Game one, we're down one to zero, lose by three. Game two, even it up. Beat them pretty badly here in game two. Shea is that guy, by the way. Shea is that guy. 130-107. Game four. And we're going to lose, aren't we? Wait, we're not done yet. Game six. This is going to be a big one. If we can force back to game seven in Phoenix, we got to win in Oklahoma City first. But we can go back to Phoenix, win this game seven. We're back in the conference finals. We're blowing them out here, which is a good sign. Don't let them back in it. We're letting them back in it. Please. There we go. Hang on. And now we can go to a game seven in Oklahoma City, or in Phoenix, I should say. And this gets us back to the conference finals where we got an eighth seed waiting for us potentially. So can we get it done? Close game. Don't let up now. We got this. Hang on. And we got it. Let's go, baby. We are moving on to the conference finals once again. And now we get either the Timberwolves or the Kings, which we get the Timberwolves. So we still have the higher seed no matter what. Cat, Gobert, they have Javon Carter, Anthony Edwards, and so no more D'Lo or... They have Drew Eubanks as well. This should be an interesting matchup, but I don't have to deal with the Pelicans or Grizzlies, so I like my chances potentially. Up one to zero. We're up two to zero. Up three to zero, and we beat them in five. Let's go. Now we get to play the Detroit Pistons. We have Cade Cunningham. The Pistons are looking like Cade, uh, Jay Nivey. They still have Bojan. They have Porzingis now. I still like our chances here. I think we beat them. Game one, not a great start. Game two, we even it up. Game three, up two to one. Game four, three to one. Do we beat them in five? Let's go, baby. We have brought Devin Booker a championship. Unfortunately, we didn't get Chris Paul one, though. I traded him before that happened. But Chris Paul or Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Mikael Bridges, John Collins, DeAndre Russell are your champions. Do the Phoenix Suns trade for John Collins this year? Do you think they'll get desperate enough? Because like I said, the only reason why they would do that is because Jay Crowder not wanting to play for them anymore and Cameron Johnson potentially being out most of the year. Maybe they get desperate enough to go out there and get John Collins, man. I mean, the Hawks are looking to trade him. I know they've shown interest in like Harrison Barnes and some other guys as well. But I feel like John Collins definitely could be worth, you know, taking a flyer on for Phoenix. They don't have to. They have some salaries to match this contract. So I don't think it's a terrible idea. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This is Crushables. See y'all tomorrow. Saying peace.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.